Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here to the M&M Super Speedway as we prepare for race number four of Division One of the NCAA Skittles Super Speedway Series. Not only is this the one of the two series where the point standings are the closest, but also we have had a driver make, well, not make history, but he's in the process of making history, let's say, as Laurent Lamont lines up on the pole position for this race. Four races so far, and all four, the 36 team has qualified into the top 10, making it into round two of qualifying. They have finally been able to prove what their speed is capable of doing, putting them on the inside of the front row here today. The interesting thing about this though, Laurent Lamont comes into this race 19th in the standings, so even though this team has been absolutely exemplary when it comes to qualifying, they have only got one top 10 so far this year. We'll see if their qualifying speed translate into race speed with good starting track position here today. Alongside of him, Tristan Folks. Folks had a very struggling start to the year, but he now finds himself 25th in points, which is a sight better than where he was when he left Daytona. So we'll see what he's going to be able to do. A lot of speed out of that car. I think it's the uh, best starting track position he's had so far this season as he'll roll off from second place. But like I said, it's really close for the point stains in this one. A little bit more gap going on in the Division 2. We'll get to that when we get to Division 2. But coming into this race, top 10 the point stains, they're separated by 15 points. So it's still really close. A lot of opportunities for drivers to move into the top 10. A lot of drivers to fall out of the top 10. And of course, with only eight available playoff positions in this division, that ever elusive win. All these drivers want it, and three drivers who have won our first three races of the season, they want to get their first multi-win season here to be able to absolutely confirm they're going to be in the chase for the championship. Let's go down trackside, get those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, stop your engines! It'll be 26 laps of racing around this three-mile super speedway. Of course, uh, this track moving up on the schedule from race 5 to race 4 due to the problems with FTF. And let's give you your top 10 in the point standings coming into this race. Presented by Blame Shelly Insurance. You can also check down in the description below for your full starting lineup for today's race. Sebastian Kukulon is the points leader. He did not have a good qualifying session here, though. He's going to be starting close to the rear of the field, so we'll see if he's able to work his way up. Three points in hand over a two-way tie for second. Twent, tr uh, Twent, wow, Trent Dunham and Philip Goldberg holding those positions. Diego Yepes, he is up to fourth after a really solid outing last week at Pigs Creek. He's only four points out of the top position and only six points back. Fifth in the stands and rolling off fifth on the grid today. That's the 88 of Austin LaPlante. Ashlyn Boyd, who rolls off third. He comes into this race sixth in points, 11 points back. 14 points back in seventh. That's Cody Smart, who I believe he's... Uh, starting somewhat close to the rear of the field. Thought I saw him up here. Yep, there he is, rolling off from sixth. Uh, Vance Caldwell, he is eighth in the point stands. He's rolling off from 10th on the grid. Preston Plourd in ninth, and 10th is William Duncan. Our three previous winners so far this season are Daytona winner Brady Burkhardt. He's 13th in points. Ryan Butcher, our winner from Armory, is 17th. And Seth Cole, who took the checker flag last week at Picks Creek, he is 18th in the standings coming to this race right now. They would hold three of the eight playoff positions currently. The other five spots, Kukulon, Dunham, Goldberg, Yepes, and LaPlante off of points. But that could change today if we have our fourth different driver go to victory lane here today at the M&M's Super Speedway. Let's see what's going to happen here. 26 laps of racing. Will we see some wrecks? Will we see green flag pit stops? This track's always been fun whenever we come here. And for the first time in the Skittle Super Speedway series, we're green flag racing at M&M's. Let's roll. Couple of drivers stepping out to that third line down low. LaPlante the 88, Jay Jefferson the 28 further back as Jake Rogers switches from high to low. He'll pass Tristan Folks for second. Now he's gonna try and lead the first lap. Let's see if he makes a move on the back straightaway on Laurent Lamont. He's there, question is can he get to the left rear quarter panel? Riley Spurley tube there in the 38 and down way down low with him was the NBC Sports number nine of Jack Mitchell who is going to be driving a new paint scheme next week. Rogers is gonna clear for the lead though. He's gonna pass Lamont. So Lamont, despite starting on the pole will not get the bonus point for leading the lap at least here on lap one. Instead, it's gonna go to the champion auto parts number 98 Ford of Jake Rogers. And here comes Jack Mitchell to the inside. 
already four wide. They are five wide back here. That's Cody Smart in the middle. Benjamin Miles there with him. They were leaning on each other into the corner. It's hard to be able to focus on the 94. There he is. That was close going into turn one. They're not given a heck of a lot of room. They settled back out to looks like four wide in this pack. As up front, we just had a change for the lead. Mitchell took the top position over. Lamont getting back to the inside, moves back up to second. Then you got the Fords of Vance Caldwell and Joshua Sakuli. Then the Toyota of Philip Goldberg and also another Toyota in Matt Haas. Trouble in the middle of the pack. Smarts around. That I believe was also Riley Spurley tube in the 38. Right in the middle of the field off turn four. Cautions out for the first time today on lap number two. And one thing about M&M Super Speedway, the speeds are so high and the opportunity of missing wrecks very minimal. So I think we may have had a number of drivers involved in that and Riley Spurley Tube I believe was the car that I saw sideways. That's a driver that comes into this race 14th in points and I think the car that may have started the contact was the 94 of Cody Smart who is 7th in the points coming into this race. Jack Mitchell, who's 35th in points, however, is going to lead this race under its first yellow. And we've got drivers on pit road. I think we had a car that flipped over. There's roof damage on the 28 of Jay Jefferson, and his day is done. That is Kyle Matthews there in the 0-9. He's involved. He's scraping the pit while it is going down. That car probably no power steering. There's the car I saw first out of shape, Riley Spurley Tube in the 38. Front end damage, it appears, on Tristan Folks 91, and he started outside of the front row. You can see a little bit of a buckle there on the hood. James Qualls, last week's pole sitter, he's got damage on the front and right, also on the rear. That car badly, badly involved. And pit road is open. We got some drivers hitting pit road. There's some more damaged goods that are coming down the pit lane. I believe that's the 25 of Benjamin Miles, that yellow car there. He's got damage. Joshua Lee behind him as well. William Duncan, 10th in points. You can see he's got front end and right side damage. And a couple of other drivers coming down here as well. Jose Mills in the 6. Carter Friesen, we're looking at Preston Plort. He's got left side damage, or right side damage we just saw there. Trent Dunham, 2nd in the standings, also on pit lane, along with Jonathan Zorlin. Some of these drivers, it might be regularly scheduled stops. For some of them, though, looks like they've got some damage repair to do. As Jack Mitchell leads under the first caution, let's go back and see what happened. All right, we're focused on the 38 of Spurly 2, but look down on the left side of your screen, the lower left. You see the 94 of Cody Smart, and just to his outside is the 20 of Jay Jefferson. Oh, look right there. I think there's going to be contact left side of your screen there between Sebastian Kukulon. He gets into the right rear of Kyle Matthews. So it might have actually been Matthews the car I saw go around. Smart up into Jefferson, squeezes him into the wall. Spurly Tube's going to have nowhere to go. And then let's see any drivers down on the right side that might have gotten involved. I think maybe I saw contact there for William Duncan. Oh, look at that 28. He's headed down for the pit wall. Is he going to hit the pit wall right on the end? Oh, he did. Oh, that car went up in the air. We'll see that in just a moment. But there's Friesen involved in the 75. Mills, there's where Qualls got involved. He got into the 6, as did Miles. 85 got a piece of that. Zachary Taylor. Don't know how extensive it was for him. JT Bryant, Ryan Butcher trying to make their way by. There's where Tristan Folk gets involved there on the top of the racetrack up against the outside retaining wall. I think he was just nowhere to go. Roger Ray got a piece of that in the 68. And who's that in the smoke that hit him? Was that Trent Dunham? That might have been. Preston Plourd you see down there on the inside. We know he had some right side damage. Yeah, Trent. I think Trent might have hit the 38. It was either him or Roger Ray, and I couldn't tell which one. So the driver that comes in second in points might have some damage on the front, Trent Dunham. But we're going to go back here and look. Oh, Andrew Miller's on the pit lane. I bet he might have actually been uh, involved with the 28 of Jefferson. Oh, he was flipping as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, now this is what happens to these guys. Watch as the 5 of Joshua Lee, who was involved as well. He gets into William Duncan. Now watch that black car there in the middle, Jefferson. His car turned down the track into Andrew Miller, and they're going to hit that pole right there with that M&M sign. And oh my goodness, Jefferson up in the air. That sends the 47 into a spin. Kyle Matthews backed it into the inside wall as well. 
And look at the 47, all that momentum spinning, flipping, twisting all the way down here onto the entrance of Pit Road. Jefferson's car was all over the place there in the grass. And a wild ride for the driver of the 47, Andrew Miller, who had a great run last week at Pigs Creek, jumped up from 39th to 30th in points. Not the run he was looking for. Kyle Matthews also had a good run last week, was up to 27th in points. He's involved in this one as well. And Jefferson struggling 34th in points. All three of those drivers taking hard hits in this first caution of the day at M&M's. Lights out on the pace car. One lap to green. We'll go back racing on lap seven. As I had that weird bubble come up there, I thought I had taken care of that issue. We do have the garage area already filled up with drivers, and five of them in total. Benjamin Miles, James Qualls, Kyle Matthews, Jay Jefferson, and Andrew Miller all going back behind the wall. We had already documented where Miller, Jefferson, and Matthews came into this race in points. Well, Benjamin Miles came into this race, currently situated 20th in the standing, so this is not going to be a good points for him, points day for him. And James Qualls is also struggling in the standings as uh, he finds himself 24th in points. So a lot of drivers who needed good runs today doesn't look like they're going to get them, and we got a lot of drivers at the rear of the field like Spurly Tube, Mills, Lee, Duncan, Plourd, Smart. We all know that they've got pieces of that wreck. And pretty much from 26th on down are drivers that got involved in the wreck in some way, shape, or form. We're going to have to see if they are completely up to speed. Jack Mitchell will be leading us back to the green flag, though, over Vance Caldwell, Laurent Lamont, Philip Goldberg, and Joshua Sakuli. And the rest of the top 10 is going to be Matt Haas, Brady Burkhart, Johnny Gardner, Jake Rogers, and J.J. Roberts. Talked about how important it is for drivers to maybe get at least two, possibly three wins this season. Brady Burkhart, who started up the season with a W at Daytona, up there in seventh. Let's see where Butcher and Cole restart. Cole will be restarting in 12th, and Butcher is back in 24th. But to my knowledge, all three of our previous race winners either were ahead of or got through the wreck that took place off of turn four. And I'm really surprised that only five drivers are out of the race after the number of hits that we saw taken in that caution but here we go getting ready to go back green here gonna have 20 laps to go as they just took the green flag and interesting that none of our leaders came to pit lane so that means one of two things either they can make it the full 26 laps on fuel or they could not make it the rest of the way on fuel if they had come down pit road when it was open back on lap three so green flag pit stop, still a possibility. How about the Toyotas? Brady Burkhardt, we already mentioned. You got Philip Goldberg, the 18, the 8 of Matt Haas. Quite a few Camrys up here at the front. Toyota looking for what would be their second win of the season in both divisions. They've only got one with Burkhardt winning at Daytona so far. Vance Caldwell was really wide off the corner there. I don't know if he brushed the wall or not. As Toyota's working together, as soon as I say that, Matt Haas steps out of line for second place. One car started outside of the top 10, already up into the seventh position. That's Jessica Shelton. Seth Cole right there as well in the 33, trying to go for two wins in a row. And also a driver that I saw made it through the wreck. And there he is. Whoop. 42, our points leader, Sebastian Kukulon. He's up to the 16th position last time by. Kukulon made it through that wreck. He's been very consistent this year, hence why he is atop the point standings. I'd watch out for this car. Johnny Gardner, that car is flying through the field. He almost cracked the top 10. He's up to the 12th position. That... Crystal Pepsi Chevrolet following in the tire tracks of last week's winner Seth Cole, who is behind former pole sitter from this season, Ashland Boyd. Lead change. Matt Haas to the inside of Jack Mitchell. But will he be the leader into three? Because Philip Goldberg's trying to make it three wide. He's not going to get there. It's going to be side by side between the eight and the nine. 
Haas has a Toyota behind him and Goldberg, but Goldberg's gonna go a lane lower out of four. He's gonna try and beat Matt Haas to the line. Here comes JJ Roberts in the Chevy with a run. Who's gonna lead the lap? It will be Haas as they're four wide heading down here into turn number one. That's Ashland Boyd way down. Actually had two tires down, I believe, below the yellow line. I think she got forced down there by Seth Cole, but I'm not, or, or he got forced down there rather, by Seth Cole, but I'm not 100% certain. So the NSA officials would not force Ashlyn Boyd to have to give up any positions. As now Roberts trying to get three wide into three here with Goldberg in the middle, Haas up top. That's exactly what's going to happen. Roberts gonna go to the lead. Roberts, a former winner back in the Coors Light Truck Series, winning, if I recall correctly, at Kentucky. Vance Caldwell, who we saw brush the wall off of four a couple of laps ago, now back up to the front. Here comes Brady Burkhart and Jake Rogers with a big run up the inside line. I'm also seeing a line being formed back there with Shane Lake, Austin LaPlante, Zach Winkle, and Derek Hamill. Ooh, there was some contact back there. That was Diego Yepes. Oh, and Yepes is in the grass. Couple of cars in the grass. Roger Ray had someone spinning. Caution's out. That is Laurent Lamont, the pole sitter. Spinning on the back straightaway. Yellow flag will wave for the second time today. I saw that happening off of turn two. They were crowding each other. Who's gonna lead back to the line? Caldwell versus Rogers. You've got Eli Bright there as well. Rogers is gonna be the leader by almost a car length under our second caution. I don't know if it was Lamont and Yepes that made the contact with each other. All I know is a white machine that Yepes was rubbing doors with off of turn two. And we've seen it happen before here where cars, they make contact, they go down to the grass. A lot of times they're able to save it though they lose a lot of positions but apparently there was contact that Laurent Lamont was not able to hang on to it. And again, like I said at the top of the program, that 36 team has been the class of the field when it comes to qualifying, but they can't seem to follow it up come race time. Lamont, 19th in points coming to this race and the cause of our second caution of the day here at M&M's. We're going to stay on the 98 of Rogers just for the moment, at least until they get out of turn four, because remember, our first caution came back on lap number two. Now we are about midway through this race, so if they are going to have to make pit stops at some point of this race, you would think that now would be the time for them to hit pit road. If they don't come to pit road, that would be the telltale sign that they are able to make it the full 26 laps on what they have in the tank, and that's something we should keep in mind for our Division Two race, and a little bit of varying strategies there. Caldwell, Roberts, Burkhart, they all came to pit road, but Rogers, Bright, LaPlante, Hamill, Mitchell, Lake, they all stayed out. So this is very interesting. Some drivers feel they can't make it the full 26 laps. Other drivers feel these caution laps might be allowing them to save enough fuel to make it to the end. So some drivers giving up track position for a little bit extra Sunoco fuel. We're gonna have to see if it works out for them in the long run. Let's go back and see what happened to our pole sitter Lamont on the back straightaway. Yeah, and the white car that I saw Yep has making contact with is the 73 of Joshua Sakuli. Watch right here off of two as the 69 pushes up. He's going to get into the 73 of Sakuli. They're going to get up into the side of Lamont, and Lamont's going to get hooked in the left rear quarter panel. Now, he had rear end damage, so I think he gets hit by somebody. Maybe Roger Ray in the 68. Yep. Wow, that's pretty significant contact with the right front for the Delphi Chevy. And I don't know if he made any contact with Ryan Butcher there, the 60 or the 76 that had to go through the grass as well. But Ray got some pretty good contact with the 36 and the mount. A lot of damage on the left side, a lot of damage on the rear. The pole sitter. The reason for this second caution of the day at M&M's. Well, this wreck did not take anybody out of the race. Lamont continuing on, Roger Ray continuing on. Our top 17 drivers decided to stay out under that caution. Vance Caldwell, who was running second at the time, gave up that position, came to pit road, as did a number of other drivers, some of them up inside the top 10, and we'll restart 18th, but we now know we'll have a little bit more fuel than the 17 drivers ahead of him. 
The race leader will be Jake Rogers with Eli Bright in second, Austin LaPlante third, Derek Hamill fourth, Jack Mitchell fifth. Then the top ten will be Shane Lake, Zach Winkle, Ashlyn Boyd, Sebastian Kukulon. So the points leader went with the staying out strategy. And Johnny Gardner completes the top ten. The rest of the drivers have stayed out. JT Bryant 11th, Yepes in 12th, Butcher 13th, Zorlin 14th, 15th Cody Smart, 16th Riley Spurly Tube. Now I should make a little bit of a note that I know for certain that Zorlin, Smart, and Spurly Tube, they were all back on pit road back on lap two when we had our first caution. So maybe they have a little bit more in the bank than some of these drivers ahead of them as well. Laurent Lamont, I believe, actually also stayed out, did not come to pit road. That damaged car restarting in the 17th position. Vance Caldwell will restart 18th with Burkhart and Cole completing the top 20. Everybody else behind them, they also came to pit road under this caution. They should be good to go the rest of the way on fuel. Rogers leads us down. It's 11 laps to go here at Eminem Super Speedway. Maybe we've seen our last caution, maybe we haven't, but if we have, it's going to be very interesting in terms of who's got enough fuel to make it to the end in this final 10 laps. Jake Rogers, 23rd in points, leading the way. Shane Lake with a big run on the bottom. He's got a Ford helping him and Zach Winkle. Now Winkle's gonna go for that position. They're gonna be four wide maybe for second. Nope, then it's three wide for fourth as Derek Hamill's actually going to take the second spot away from Eli Bright. And here we go, those drivers that didn't pit before, I think they were hoping for a quick caution. They didn't get it. Now they're hoping there's gonna be a yellow because if not, they're gonna be stuck way back behind everybody else. They may have just given away an opportunity at this win. That gives the race lead over to the 12 of Eli Bright. Now, Bright also stayed out. So I think he's going to have to probably pit this next lap. Which then would turn the lead over. Oh, he's out of fuel, I think. Because Roberts is making a move. And this is not good for Bright because it's going to stick him on the outside. He may not have a clear lane down to be able to get to pit road. So Roberts is going to take the lead. Cole's going to move into second. And Bright cannot get to pit road. That car might run out of fuel. Ashland Boyd, Johnny Gardner, Cody Smart, they're hitting pit lane. I'm watching the telemetry of the 12 just to see if it decreases. So far, he's still been able to maintain. As you see drivers coming off of pit road there that had just come onto the pit lane. Eli Bright's got to get himself to the bottom of the track because I think he can't make it any further than this lap that he has. As now Roberts has to make his way through traffic. That's Ryan Butcher and Jonathan Zorlin who had just come off pit road. And Eli Bright still trapped in the outside line. It's a battle for third. Give it to Matt Haas. Bright still running. Now he's going to finally get to pit lane. So looks like new players at the front. Roberts with the lead. Cole in second. Matt Haas third. Fourth place right now is Burkhart with Goldberg in fifth and Vance Caldwell in sixth. It's interesting too because one of those drivers that decided to stay out and had to come to pit road when we went back green was Sebastian Kukulon. Two drivers that decided to come to pit road under the caution are Trent Dunham and Philip Goldberg, who came into this race only three points back from Kukulon for the points lead. So it looks like either Goldberg or Dunham could be leaving M&Ms as the new points leader, depending on which one finishes higher than the other. Got more traffic up ahead to deal with. That's JT Bryant, the 22. There's Kukulon. Catching up now with Cody Smart and Zach Winkle. Kukulon's back in 26th now, I believe on the tail end of the lead lap. Shane Lake back here as well. And now these leaders are about to catch that traffic. Battle for the lead. Matt Haas to the inside of Roberts. Look at the run Brady Burkhart got down the back straightaway. He's going to go three wide for the lead. He's got help from Philip Goldberg. And this three wide's going to catch up to the tail end of the field very quickly. Burkhardt's going to clear for the spot. Goldberg going to move to second. Seth Cole is there. Joshua Sakuli, Vance Caldwell. 
And I believe the 48 of Zorlin and the 76 of Butcher, they are both off the lead lap, but they're in this pack. Then you've got eighth place, Jose Mills, trying to keep up with the tail end of this group. There he is. We know he got a little bit of damage from the first caution. And then this is actually right here, the battle for ninth, Trent Dunham and Preston Plourd. 11th place, you've got Patrick Zitch and Carter Friesen right now runs in the 12th spot. LaPlante, he's a lap down in 30th. Shelton's a lap down in 31st. And Roberts got dropped back very quickly as now battle for the lead. Goldberg, Burkhart, who's gonna lead the lap? Burkhart's got the drafting help, but Goldberg by a splitter will lead a lap here at M&M's. Boy, they do not look very stable back there. Seth Cole was all over the place. As Robert's now gonna pass them. Now they're having to deal with Cody Smart, who right now is the last car on the lead lap. They fan out three wide off of turn two. Brady Burkhardt started the season off with a win at Daytona. A win here at M&M's could absolutely confirm that he will be one of the eight representatives in Division I in this season's chase for the championship. But there's the Ford of Sakuli, the Chevy of Roberts, also Vance Caldwell's fusion. They all want a shot at this win as well. Kukulon right now, last car on the lead lap. You got a big pack of cars up here, which I believe this is all for position. All these drivers battling. Highest running is, I believe, 16th. So these drivers are all battling to get up inside of the top 20. So that's some positions that Kukulon could gain if he can pick up some, sp some spots here. Not enough, I don't think, to be able to hold on to the points lead, though, because Goldberg got a lap led, and Dunham is up inside of the top 10 as well. But I'm seeing a lot of drivers not really willing to work with each other, and as consequence, Brady Burkhardt getting out in front has been able to hold these drivers at bay. Robert's now going to go for second on Joshua Sakuli. I can't tell if they're closing in on this pack or not. If they are, it's really going to jumble the field up. I don't know if they're going to catch them within three laps, though, because it is three laps to go here at M&M's. Roberts trying to clear for second. Looks like he'll succeed in doing so. Going to get a big run on Brady Burkhardt down the back straightaway. Let's see if Roberts can make a move into three. Not going to have to contest with anyone on his inside, pinning him to that outside line as Haas moves into third, so Cooley back to fourth. Roberts is right there. Can he make a move here into three? Will Burkhardt open the door? He does, and Roberts is going to stick his foot in there. Now he's got to get the run off the corner, though. Burkhardt's got Haas up top with him. Sakuli so down low with Roberts. Roberts, if he can stay alongside going into turn one, he'll have him cleared off of turn two. Two laps to go here at M&M's. Burkhart pulls ahead by a little bit, but he doesn't have the 81 cleared. Roberts drives it in deep. He clears for the top position, but here comes Joshua Sakuli in the 73. William Duncan, the 17 up ahead. He's off the pace. He's got some damage, and I think they will at least catch him before this race is over. Which line's he going to take? Which line's Roberts going to take? Sakuli going to take? Roberts goes way up top. He's going to clear for the spot. Roberts using the 17 as a pick. He's going to take the position. Burkhardt back to second. Traffic still for the 81, though. Can he cut his way through here on the final lap? To the inside of Roger Ray. Burkhardt right there with him. He's going to get to the inside as well. Burkhardt versus Roberts for this win, it looks like. Still more traffic ahead, but will they catch them before the checkers? Burkhardt with a big run out of turn number two. Will he be able to get to the inside? He pulls the inside now here in the back straightaway. It may come down to the traffic ahead as to who's going to win this race. Roberts trying to edge out in front going into three. Burkhardt still there to the left rear quarter panel. Burkhardt to the inside. Can he clear him off the corner? Roberts still trying to hang tough. He gets cleared. Brady Burkhardt's going to get his second win of the season. He's confirmed into the chase for the championship for Division I as he takes his second checkered flag of the season here today at M&M's. What a win for Brady Burkhart. We'll show you your full feature results and everything. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this race at M&M's on the Estuary Sports Channel, Offline Racing at its best.